Welcome to a Friday special Coffee with Dragon session session special special edition Black History Month edition baby February today is February 8th I have done first video it's a series that is Trinity three parts I've done one I've begun reading learning also myself of Black History Month from of course a North American perspective Black History Month celebrated in Canada, in the United States, myself as a world LGBTQ citizen living Hawk Island, also known as Montreal. Black History Month, baby. Black History Month. Coffee with Dragon is dedicated to Black History Month and Black Brothers and Sisters for world peace, together in harmony, universal brotherhood. Of course, my perspective is one human race, you know, or one human race, that is just my philosophy, my belief, my ethical, of course, with many different varieties of diversity, and that's beautiful, diversity, but fundamentally to believe that we are one human race, yes, and the core, and fundamental, Black History Month, pour yourself a cup of coffee, we will be going, like, last time, this videos will be posted throughout the month of February, although, one was recorded, I think, on February 6th, the first one, and again, this is the second, and there will be a third. However, because of the Asian New Year, I have also done a series that is a trinity in regards to the um, Lunar New Year, the Year of the Pig, also known as the Chinese New Year, and of course the Asian New Year. Cheers. So, I'm going to start now by googling, of course, um, Black History Month, and we'll take it from there. Actually, the series that we started was concerning um, Black History Month, of course, and there it is, and we will continue Black History Month. We were of course we ended at the slavery part we discussed slavery and the origins of the black history month and now we will be going specifically we'll be focusing on Canada and we will be going on Black History Month in Canada and we will be Actually, we will be going to not Canadian focused, only North American focused, but we will be um, reading an article related about Black History Month. Explore articles and videos. Some of the most prominent African Americans have made Black History what it is today. Learn about the firebrand, abolitionist Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, and Sojourner Truth. The political philosophies of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. The imagination and intellectualism of James Baldwin, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, and Maya Angelou. The trailblazing music of Chuck Berry, Louis Armstrong, Diana Ross, and Tina Turner. Love Tina Turner. Tina Turner. So amazing. <whistles> Love Tina Turner. The entertainment of the entertainment of Josephine Baker, Richard Pryor, and media giant Oprah Winfrey. The
the legislative impact of Thurgood Marshall, Shirley Chisholm, and President Barack Obama, 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 the scientific contribution of George Washington Carver, Charles Drew, and Henrietta Lacks, and the athletic record-breaking feats of Muhammad Ali, Jackie Robinson, Jesse Owens, and Wilma Rudolph. People in this group, Beyonce Knowles. It was actually my the favorite video, one of my favorite music songs and videos, choreographer videos, actually Beyonce has got two. One is an older video, it's called Girls Run, the world, girls run the world, uh, girls run the world. That is actually one of my favorites, favorite if not top three or top five, it's definitely top ten favorite hip hop or pop or rap, a little bit of each songs and not only song but music video a music video with Beyonce dancing with the group it's so beautiful it's about seven years older now it's not that new but it's still relevant to today maybe even more relevant than it was at the time that it was made in my opinion, my opinion. meditation spirituality Beyonce knows so it's called Girls Run the World. Girls Run the World. So Beyonce knows. And then we have Kareem Abdul Jabbar, biography, Ben Carson, Tina Turner. How about we start with Tina Turner and we'll read a bit about Tina Turner. So we'll be focusing more on specific um, today in this cup of coffee we spoke about prominent blacks, black Americans, African Americans who have contributed to culture, Western culture, part of Western culture, world and actually we could say universal culture, international culture, North American culture, society. From a cultural perspective, from a scientific perspective, from all perspectives. So Tina Turner. We'll start with her, Tina Turner. She's so lovely. Wow. Who date? Want to go on a date, Tina Turner? Tina Turner, she's beautiful. Tina Turner biography. Actress singer born in 1939. Grammy winner Tina Turner rose to fame in the 1960s by singing and performing with then husband Ike Turner, later enjoying an international solo career with hits like What Love Got to Do With It, Got to Do With It, What's Love If You Don't Respect the Game, What Love Got to Do With It, Got to Do With It, Oh, na 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 na. Better be good to me, private dancer and typical male. Who is Tina Turner? Born in Tennessee, Tennessee is a state in southern United States. In 1939, Tina Turner began performing with musician Ike Turner in the 1950s. They became known as the Ike and Tina Turner Review, achieving popular acclaim for their live performances and recordings like the top five hit Proud Mary until Tina left in the 1970s after years of domestic abuse. Following a slow start to her solo career, Turner achieved massive, massive success with her 1984, 1984, is that true? Yes, yes, 1984, this is that the was born in, so Tina Turner achieved massive success with her 1984 album, Private Dancer. She went on to deliver more chart-topping albums and hit singles and was elected into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1991. The revered singer later became involved in the spiritual Beyond Project and married longtime boyfriend Erwin back in July 2013. Tina Turner was born Anna May Bullock, B-U-L-L-O-C-K, Bullock, 
On November 26, 1939, in Nutbush, Tennessee, her parents, Floyd and Zama Bullock, were poor sharecroppers who were in her life split up and left Turner and her sister to be raised by their grandmother. When her grandmother died in the early 1950s, Turner moved to St. Louis, Missouri to be with her mother. Barely in her teens, Turner quickly immersed herself in St. Louis R&B scene, spending much of her time at Club Manhattan. It was there in 1956 that she met rock and roll pioneer like Ike Turner, who often played at a club with the Kings of Rhythm. Soon Turner was performing with the group and she quickly became the highlight of their show, making the charts fall in love. In 1960, when another singer failed to show up for a Kings of Rhythm recording session, Turner sang the lead on a track titled A Fool in Love. The record was then sent to a radio station in New York and was released under the moniker I Contain Not Turner. The song became a huge R&B success and soon crossed over to the pop charts. Before long, the group was touring as the Ike and Tina Turner Review and earning renown for their electrifying stage performances. The group also capitalized on the success of A Fall in Love by releasing a string of successful follow-up singles including It's Gonna Work Out Fine, Poor Fool, and Tra La La La. Ike and Tina get married, then famed interpretation of Proud Married, and get it. So that's... Tina Turner, of course, for you there, Tina Turner. Now we will be going to Mr. James Lawson. So this cup of coffee in Black History Month is focused more on individuals. And the third and final will be again probably going to be dwelling in the human rights and an overall recap of everything that we've, we've discussed and we've learned. Hopefully myself in doing this for my own education, my own learning about Black History Month. Our black brothers and sisters. James Lawson. James Lawson. Preacher, civil rights activist, born in 1928. Reverend James Lawson was a leader in the civil rights movement who advocated for the use of nine, na, non violent tactics to effect positive social change. None matter. Who is Reverend Jackson? Reverend James Lawson, born September 22, 1928, was a leader in the civil rights movement who advocated for the use of nonviolent tactics. He was involved with the struggle to desegregate downtown Nashville. The Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee the Freedom Rights and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. In 1968, he supported the Memphis sanitation workers strike and invited Martin Luther King Jr. to give a speech in Memphis. On this visit, King was assassinated. Throughout his life, Lawson has remained committed to nonviolence, protest and civil disobedience to effect positive social change. Family Law. James Lawson was born on September 22, 1928, in Union, Union Town, Pennsylvania, to Reverend James Morris Lawson and Sir Philane May Cover Lawson. Soon after arriving in Nashville, Lawson met Dorothy Wood. On July 3, 1959, they married. The couple had three sons together. Education Lawson received his BA from Baldwin Wallace College in 1952. That is a BA Bachelor of Arts. After his time as a missionary in India, he studied theology at Oberlin College before transferring to Vanderbilt. Following his expulsion from Vanderbilt, he finished his graduate degree at Boston University School of Theology, Vanderbilt University. Lawson, being expelled by Vanderbilt in 1960, made national headlines, facing strong faculty objections, including some resignations. The school offered a compromise for him to receive his degree from Vanderbilt by transferring credits or going through a written examination, but Lawson turned it down. However, Lawson demonstrated that he didn't harbor ill will toward Vanderbilt when he became a lecturer there in 2006. In addition, in 1996, he was given Vanderbilt Divinity School's first Distinguished Alumnus Award. He has donated many of his papers to the Vanderbilt Library Special Collection. Activist in the Civil Rights Movement.
I finished none. Eh. Workout not long ago. My friend gave me a tennis ball that works. Miracles for the feet and my feet are hurting. I've just finished a four and a half hour cardio walk today and so do want to I'm so sore tired especially my back is kinda thick but so if you do make ah ah noises is because I'm engaged in doing some foot massages to my own self with a ball since I'm pretty sore after this long walk in Hawk Island also known as Montreal so the dragon is digression and noises. Please excuse them. Activist in the civil rights movement. Martin Luther King Jr. called James Lawson the greatest teacher of nonviolence in America. And civil rights leader Diane Nash. We learned about nonviolent protests from Lawson, one said of him. I think his impact was fundamental and tremendous. I think that he, more than anyone else, is why the civil rights movement was nonviolent. Nashville. After meeting King in 1957 at Oberlin College, Lawson headed, heeded King's advice to go to the South in order to share nonviolent methods with the civil rights movement. Lawson became a field officer for the Fellowship of Reconciliation and moved to Nashville in 1958. That fall, he enrolled in the Divinity School at Vanderbilt University in Nashville. Lawson began to lead seminars about nonviolence. Students from the different colleges in the area were drawn to these workshops. Among the future leaders in attendance were Nash, John Lewis, James Bell, Marion Berry, and Bernard Lafayette. They weren't entirely convinced by Lawson's approach, but as Nash explained, I kept going to the workshops because I couldn't find anyone else who was trying to do anything else. In the fall of 1959, Lawson and the Nashville students prepared to conduct sit-ins to integrate lunch counters downtown, chosen because black women had described how difficult and demeaning it was to cope with segregation. Mm -hmm while shopping in downtown Nashville. In preparation, prospective participants had to pretend to be at a sit-in while others yelled, denigrated, or attacked. Sit-ins began on February 13, 1960. After similar efforts had started in Greensboro, Green, Greensboro North Carolina, Carolina. Despite being arrested and facing violent white crowds, the protesters were highly disciplined. A credit to Lawson's training. Tensions rose in the city. In the city, a black attorney, attorney's home was bombed in April. But by May 10, 1960, some la lunch counters had desegregated. In the following years, other businesses also integrated their facilities. However, Lawson's involvement with the demonstrations led to Vanderbilt expelling him in March 1960. 1960. Lawson was invited by Ella Baker to deliver the keynote speech in April. 1960 meeting in North Carolina where the student nonviolent coordinating committee was formed. Lawson felt that older organizations such as the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People could be too hidebound and focused on incremental progress. At the conference he criticized the futile middle class technique of sending letters to the centers of power and halfway efforts to deal with radical social evil. Interestingly enough, makes me parallel that's that's parallel today with the economic growing economic inequality. Who 
Glasser, who was also a co-author of the S NCC Statement of Purpose, and his teachings are evident in SNCC instructions such as don't strike back or curse if abused, remember love and nonviolence. Freedom Rides. In 1961, the Freedom Rides attempts to integrate interstate integrate interstate transportation were in danger of stopping because of violent attacks including a firebombing in Alabama. However, Lawson supported the Nashville students who wanted them to continue. He shared nonviolent techniques with freedom riders and joined in the protests himself. In the fall of 1961, interstate transit terminals were desegregated. Memphis 1962, Lawson became a pastor at a Methodist church in Memphis when sanitation workers went on strike in 1968 over low pay and dangerous working conditions in the city. He offered his support by chairing the strike committee. Lawson also invited Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. to visit and bring attention to the cause. King came to Memphis and delivered his I've been to the mountaintop speech. The next day, April 4th, 1968, he was assassinated at a motel, which devastated Lawson. April 4th, 1968. Education in nonviolence. Lawson's belief in nonviolence took root when he was young. After he'd slapped a white boy who'd, call, who'd called him a racial slur, Lawson's mother asked what he, he'd accomplished. Considering this began to change Lawson's approach to confrontation. As a student at Baldwin Wallace College, Lawson joined the Fellowship of Recon Recon Reconciliation, a pacifist organization, and began to learn more about nonviolence. Following his 1952 release from prison for refusing to obey the draft, he spent three years in India as a Christian missionary. There, Lawson was able to learn about Satyagraha, 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 S A T I Y, that is Y A G R A H A, Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy of nonviolent resistance, which had helped end British rule in India. While in India, Lawson who was also excited to learn about the bus boycott taking place in Montgam Mon Montgam Montgomery, Alabama. Talking about the power of nonviolence in 1950, 1985, Lawson said psychologically, it is an extreme weapon. I turned the other cheek. Now it's true, the assailant maiden socked me on that cheek as well. But it may also happen that the assailant does something else. That he's upset that instead of me using the fist against him, I turned the other cheek. <laughs> Early life. Lawson grew up in Missouri, Ohio. Following the ministerial footsteps of his father and grandfather, he got his local preacher's license in 1947. He resisted the draft. The draft resisted. He went in Los Angeles, became a pastor at Home Methodist Center in Los Angeles, and the work continues. He's moved. His move to Los Angeles and even retirement didn't stop Lawson from standing up for what he believes in. He has supported immigrant rights, LGBT equality and reproductive choice, and has protested against poverty and U.S. military actions. 
His later years saw more civil disobedience arrests for Latin in the 1960s. In addition, via his students, congregations, and endeavors such as the James Lawson Institute, Lawson's teachings will continue to influence policy and lift up those in need. Fact check. We strive for accuracy and fairness. If you see something that doesn't look right, contact us. I'm not gonna go I'm going to go to Irene actually Alice Ball a chemist Alice Alice Ball was a chemist biography 1982 nine no 1892 to 1916 Alice Ball was an African-American chemist who developed the first successful treatment from those suffering from Hansen's, Hansen's disease in paradise is also known as leprosy, like leprosy. It's called Hansen's disease, H-A-N-S-E-N. Who was Alice Ball? Alice Augusta Ball, July 24th. Oh, July 24th is when the, she was a little the lion. Well, some say because it's the 23rd of July, some say 24th. So. Alice Augusta Ball, July 24, 1892 to December 31st, 1916. Was an African-American chemist who developed the first successful treatment for those suffering from Hansen's disease. Ball was also the very first African-American and the very first woman, woman to graduate with an MS, that is a Master of Science, degree in chemistry from the College of Hawaii, now known as the University of Hawaii. Tragically, Ball died at the young age of 24. During her brief lifetime, she did not get to see the full impact of her discovery. It was not until years after her death that Ball got the cr proper credit she deserved. Leprosy treatment, the Ball method. After earning undergraduate degrees in pharmaceutical chemistry, 1912, and pharmacy, 1914, from the University of Washington, Alice Ball transferred to the College of Hawaii, now known as the University of Hawaii and became the very first African American and the very first woman to graduate wow with an MS Master of Science Studies degree in chemistry in 1915. She was offered a teaching and research position there and became the institution's very first woman chemistry instructor. She was only 23 years old. Wow. As a laboratory researcher, Ball worked extensively to develop a successful treatment for those suffering from Hansen's disease, leprosy. Her research led her to create the first injectable leprosy treatment using oil from the Chomogra tree, C-H-A-U-L-M-O-O-G-R-A tree, which up until then was only a moderately successful top agent that was used in Chinese and Indian medicine. Ball successfully isolated the oil into fatty acid components of different molecular weights, allowing her to manipulate the oil into a water-soluble soluble injectable form. Ball's scientific rigor in s resulted in a highly successful method to alleviate leprosy symptoms, later known as the Ball method, that was used on thousands of infected individuals for over 30 years until 
cell phone drugs were introduced. The bomb method was so successful, leprosy patients were discharged from hospitals and facilities across the globe, including from Kalaupapa, an isolation facility on the north shore of Molokai, Hawaii, where thousands of people suffering from leprosy died in prior years. Thanks to Alice Ball, these banished individuals can now return to their families, free from the symptoms of leprosy. Isn't that amazing? Death and Discovery Credit Stone. Tragically, Ball died on December 20, uh, 31st, 1916, and 16 at the young age of 24 after complications resulting from inhaling chlorine gas in a lab teaching accident. During her brief lifetime, she did not get to see the full impact of her discovery. What's more, following her death, the president of the College of Hawaii, Dr. Arthur Dean, Continued Ball's research without giving her credit for the discovery. Dean even claimed her discovery for himself, calling it the Dean Method. Unfortunately, it was commonplace for men to take the credit of women or their uh, discoveries, and Ball fell victim to this practice. Learn about three more women scientists whose discoveries were credited to men. Yeah. In 19, 1922, six years after the death, her death, Dr. Harry T. Holman, the assistant surgeon at Kalihi Hospital, who originally encouraged Ball to explore chromograph oil, published a paper giving Ball the proper credit she deserved. Even so, Ball remained largely forgotten from scientific history until recently. Wow. Amazing. We will now turn to read about Mr. Barack Obama. Mama Barack Obama, U.S. President, U.S. Senator Lawyer, 1961. 1961. Barack Obama was the 44th President of the United States and the first African American to serve in the office. First elected to the presidency in 2008. He won a second term in 2012. Who is Barack Obama? Born in Honolulu in 1961, Barack Obama went on to become president of the Harvard Law Review and a U.S. Senator representing Illinois. In 2008, he was elected president of the United States, becoming the first African-American commander-in-chief. He served two terms as the 44th president of the United States. Where was Barack Obama born? Eh? Oh, isn't it? Barack, Oba Barack Hussein Obama II was born in Honolulu, Hawaii on August 4th, 1961. It was a Leo. His astrological sign is Leo. August 1st, Leo starts astro sign. In July 23, some say July 24th. So August 4th, definitely a Leo. Full blown Leo. His mother, Ann Denham, Denham, was born on the on an army base in Wichita, Wichita, Kansas, during World War II. After the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Denham's father, Stanley, enlisted in the military and marched across Europe in General George Pat Patton's army. Denham's mother, Madeline, 
went to work on a bomber assembly line. After the war, the couple studied on the GI Bill, they bought a house through the federal housing program, and after several moves, ended up in Hawaii. Hawaii. Barack Obama Sr. Obama's father, Barack Obama Sr. was born of Luo, it's spelled L-U-O, ethnicity, in Nyanza province in Kenya. Obama Sr. grew up herding goats in Africa and eventually earned a scholarship that allowed him to leave Kenya and pursue his dreams of going to college in Hawaii. Well, while studying at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, Obama senior met fellow student uh, Ann Dunham and they married on February 2nd 1961 Barack was born six months later as a child Obama did not have a relationship with his father when his son was still an infant Obama senior relocated to Massachusetts to attend Harvard University and pursue a PhD Obama's parents Officially separated several months later and ultimately divorced in March 1964 when their son was two. Soon after, Obama Sr. returned to Kenya. In 19. Oh, In 1965, Dunham married Lolo Soitoro, a University of Hawaii student from Indonesia. Indonesia. A year later, the family moved to Jakarta, Indonesia, where a year later, the family moved to Jakarta, Indonesia, where Obama's half sister, Maya Soitoro, and and NG 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 Maya Sotoro spelled NG I guess that's like a family name was born in 1970 several incidents in Indonesia left Dunham afraid for her son's safety and education so at the age of 10 Obama was sent back to Hawaii to live with his maternal grandparents his mother and half sister later joined them education while while living with his grandparents obama enrolled in the esteemed punahou academy he excelled in basketball and graduated with academic honors in 1979 as one of only three black students at the school obama became conscious of racism and what it meant to be african-american he later described how he struggled to reconcile social perceptions of his multi-racial heritage with his own sense of self well I noticed that there was nobody like me in the Sears. Uh, Roebuck Christmas catalog. And that Santa was a white man. He wrote, I went into the bathroom and stood in front of the mirror with all my senses and limbs seemingly intact, looking as I had always looked, and wondered if something was wrong with me. Obama also struggled with the absence of his father. Who he saw only once more after his parents divorced when Obama senior visited Hawaii for a short time in 1971. My father had left paradise and nothing that my mother or grandparents told me could obviate that single unassailable fact, he later reflected. They couldn't describe what it might have been like had he stayed. Ten years later in 19... 19- 81 tragedy struck Obama Sr. when he lost both of his legs in a serious car accident. Confined to a wheelchair, he also lost his job. In 1982, Obama Sr. was involved in another car accident while traveling in Nairobi. This time, however, the crash was fatal. Obama Sr. died on November 24, 1982, when Obama was 21 years old. At the time of his death, my father remained a myth to me. Obama later on. Both more and less than a man. Young Barack Obama. After high school, Obama studied at Occidental College in Los Angeles for two years. 
He then transferred to Columbia University in New York City, graduating in 1983 with a degree in political science. After working in the business sector for two years, Obama moved to Chicago in 1985. There, he worked on the impoverished South Side as a community organizer for low-income residents in the Roseland and the Alka Gardens communities. Law career. It was during this time that Obama, who said he was not raised in a religious household, joined the Trinity United Church of Christ. He also visited relatives in Kenya and paid an emotional visit to the graves of his biological father and paternal grandparents. For a long time, I sat between the two graves and wept. Mama wrote, I saw that my life in America, the black life, the white life, the sense of abandonment I had felt as a boy, the frustration and hope, I'd witness in Chicago. All of it was connected with this small plot of earth and ocean away. Returning from Kenya with a sense of renewal, Obama entered Harvard Law School in 1988. This, the new year, he met with constitutional law professor Lawrence Tribe and their discussion so impressed Tribe that when Obama asked to join his team as a research assistant, the professor agreed. The better he did at Harvard Law School and the more he impressed people, the more obvious it became that he could have had anything, said Professor Tribe in a 2012 interview with Frontline. But it was clear that he wanted to make a difference to people, to communities. That same year, Obama joined the Chicago law firm of Sidley Austin as a summer associate, and it was there he met Michelle Robinson, a young lawyer who was assigned to be his advisor. Not long after couple began dating. In February 1990, Obama was elected the first African-American editor of the Harvard Law Review. He graduated from Magna Cum Laude from Harvard Law in 1991. After law school, Obama returned to Chicago to practice as a civil rights lawyer with the firm of Minor Barnhill and Galland. He also taught constitutional law part-time at the University of Chicago Law School between 1992 and 2004. First as a lecturer and then as a professor, and helped organize voter registration drives during Bill Clinton's 1992 presidential campaign. On October 3, 1992, him and Michelle were married. They moved to Kenwood on Chicago's South Side and welcomed two daughters several years later. Malia, born 1998, and Sasha, born 2001. And then, of course, entering into the politics. And, of course, in 2008, He won the presidential elections. In February 20, 2007, Obama made headlines when he announced his candidacy for the 2008 Democratic presidential nomination. On November 4, 2008, Barack Obama defeated Republican presidential nominee John McCain, 52.9% to 45.7%, to win election as the 44th President of the United States and the first African-American to hold this office. His running mate, Delaware Senator Joe Biden, became Vice President inauguration. It took place in January 20th, 2009. January 20th, 2009. First 100 days, 2010 State of the Union. On January 27, 2010, President Obama delivered his first State of the Union speech. During his oration, Obama addressed the challenges of the economy, proposed a fee for larger banks, announced a possible freeze on government spending in the fo following fiscal year, and spoke against the Supreme Court's reversal of a law capping campaign finance spending. Obama signed his health care reform plan, known as the Affordable Care Act, into law in March 2010.
in 2012 re-election on November 6 hmm, interesting November 6 2012 Obama won a second four-year term as president by receiving nearly 5 million more votes than Romney and capturing more than 60 percent of the electoral college November 6th awesome now we'll go to madam CJ Walker madam CJ Walker entrepreneur civil rights activist philanthropist 1867-1919 madam cj walker born sarah breedlove breedlove love that name cool breedlove b-r-e-e-d-l-o-v created specialized hair products for african-american hair and was one of the first african uh, american women wow to become a self-made millionaire wow that's cool Madam C.J. Walker facts. Madam C.J. Walker was born Sarah Breedlove on December 23, 1867 near, near Delta, Louisiana. After suffering from a scalp ailment that resulted in her own hair loss, she invented a line of African-American hair care products in 1905. She promoted her products by traveling around the country giving lecture demonstrations and eventually established Madame C.J. Walker Laboratories to manufacture cosmetics cosmetics and trained sales beauticians her business acumen led her to be one of the first american women to become a self-made millionaire amazing she was also known for her philanthropic endeavors including a donation toward the construction of an indianapolis ymca in 1913 wow hair care hair care hair care during the 1890s, Sarah Breedlove developed a scalp disorder that caused her to lose much of her hair. And she began to experiment with both home remedies and store-bought hair care treatments in an attempt to improve her condition. In 1905, Breedlove was hired as a commission agent by Annie Turnbull Malone, a successful black hair care product entrepreneur, and she moved to Denver, Colorado. Madam C.J. Walker Company. While there, Breedlove's husband Charles helped her create advertisements for her hair care treatment for African Americans that she was perfecting. Her husband also encouraged her to use the more recognizable name, Madam C.J. Walker, by which she was thereafter known. In 1907, Walker and her husband traveled around the South and Southeast, promoting her products and giving lecture demonstrations of her Walker method, including her own formula for pomade p-o-m-a-d pomade brushing and the use of heated comb he heated combs walker agents as profits continued to grow in 1908 walker opened a factory at a beauty school in pittsburgh and by 1910 when walker transferred her business operations to indianapolis the madam cj walker manufacturing company had become wildly successful with profits that were the modern day equivalent of several million dollars in indianapolis the company not only manufactured cosmetics but also trained sales beautician beauticians beauticians these walker agents <laughs> became well known throughout the black communities of the united states in turn they promoted walker's philosophy of cleanliness and loveliness cleanliness and loveliness as a means of advancing the status of african americans an innovator walker organized clubs and conventions for her representatives which recognized not only successful sales but also philanthropic and educational efforts among african americans madam cj walker harlem years in 1913 walker and charles divorced and she traveled throughout latin america and the caribbean promoting her business and recruiting others to teach her hair care methods while her mother traveled Aya Walker helped facilitate the purchase of property in Harlem, New York, recognizing that the area would be an important base for future up business operations. 
1916, upon returning from her travels, Walker moved to her new townhouse in Harlem. From there, she would continue to operate her business while leaving the day-to-day -day operations of her factory in Indianapolis to its forelady. Walker quickly immersed herself in the social and political culture of the Harlem Renaissance. She founded philanthropies that included educational scholarships and donations to homes for the elderly. The National Association of the Advancement, Advancement of Colored People and the National Conference of, on Lynching, among other organizations focused on improving the lives of African Americans. She also donated the largest amount of money by an African American toward the construction of an Indianapolis YMCA in 1913. Wow. Madam C.J. Walker was born Sarah Breed, Breed uh, on December 23, 1867, on a cotton plantation near Delta, Louisiana. Her parents, Owen and Minerva, were recently freed slaves, and Sarah, who was their fifth child, were, was the first in her family to be freeborn. Wow. It's amazing. Yep. Now we will be reading about Yep, in a bit. No, in a bit. I mean, in like ten, five, oh, ten minutes. <laughs> no. Mr. Ben Carson is now next. Mr. Ben Carson, philanthropist, politician, author, and surgeon. Renowned neurosurgeon Ben Carson is the United States Secretary of Housing and Urban Development appointed by President Trump. Who is Ben Carson? Ben Carson was born in Detroit, Michigan on September 18, 1951. His mother, though un undereducated herself, pushed her sons to read and believe in themselves. Carson went from being a poor student to receiving academic honors and eventually attending medical school as a doctor he became director of pediatric neurosurgery at johns hopkins hospital at age 33 and earned fame for his groundbreaking work separating conjoined twins he retired from medicine in 12 13 20, 2013 and two years later he entered politics making a bid to become the republican candidate for u.s president after struggling in the primary elections, Carson dropped out of the race in March 2016 and then became a vocal, really, supporter of Republican nominee and former rival Donald Trump. After Trump was elected president, he nominated Carson to become the secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Birth and family background. Benjamin Solomon Carson was born in Detroit, Michigan on September 18, 1951, second son of Sonia and Robert Solomon, Solomon Carson. His mother was raised in Tennessee in a very large family and dropped out of school in the third grade with limited prospects in life. She married Baptist minister and factory worker Robert Carson when she was 13. The couple moved to Detroit and had two children, but Sonia eventually discovered her husband was a bigamist. Bigamist? B I G A M I S T, a bigamist, and had another secret family. After the couple divorced, Robert moved in with his other family, leaving Sonia and her children financially devastated. Influential mother, mother. Ben was eight and Curtis, his brother, was ten when Sonia began to raise them as a single mother, reportedly moving to Boston to live with her sister for a time and eventually returning to Detroit. 
The family was very poor and to make ends meet, Sonia sometimes toiled at two or three jobs simultaneously in order to provide for her boys. Most of the jobs she had was as a, was as, was as a domestic worker. As Carson later detailed in his autobiography, his mother was frugal with the family's finances, cleaning and patching clothes from the goodwill in order to dress the boys. The family would also go to local farms and offer to pick vegetables in exchange for a portion of the field. Sonia would then can the produce for her, for the, her children's meals. Her actions and the way she managed the family proved to be a tremendous influence on Ben and Curtis. Sonia also taught her boys that anything was possible. But his recollection many years later, Carson had thoughts of a career in medicine. Power of reading. We're doing it now. We're all in the honor of Black History Month. power of reading. Both Carson and his brother experienced difficulty in school. Ben fell to the bottom of his class and became the object of ridicule by his classmates. Determined to turn her sons around, Sonia limited their TV time to a few select programs and refused to let them go outside and play until they had finished their homework. She required them to read. Wow! two library books a week and give her written reports even though with her poor education she could bar barely read them <laughs> at first Ben resented the strict regimen but after several weeks he began to find enjoyment in reading discovering he could go any place be anybody and do anything between the covers of a book wow it's amazing and it, we're gonna end it there for Ben Carson and we will be wrapping up with Beyonce Knowles Beyonce Knowles Beyonce. Beyonce. Beyonce, Beyonce Knowles, film actor, film actress, singer, actress, film actress. Beyonce Knowles is a multi-platinum Grammy Award winning recording artist who acclaimed for her thrilling, who's acclaimed for her thrilling vocals, videos, and live shows. Who is Beyonce Knowles? Born in Houston, Texas. Beyonce Knowles first captured the public's eye as lead vocalist of the R&B group Destiny's Child. When nobody's around, just say, baby, I love you. I play a game, say my name, say my name. She later established a solo career with her debut album, Dangerously in Love, becoming one of music's top-selling artists with sold-out tours and a slew of awards. No Knowles also starred in several films, including Dreamgirls. She married hip-hop art recording artist Jay-Z. Oh, no. In 2008, in later in late 2013, she surprised audiences by releasing her fifth studio album, self-titled Beyonce, and has twice performed at the Super Bowl. She released her sixth studio album, Lemonade, 
after the airing of an HBO special in April 2016 and two years later she dropped a joint album with Jay-Z Everything is Love while the two were on tour cool name Everything is Love yeah Everything is Love also weird and early life Singer and actress Beyonce Giselle Knowles was born on September 4, 1981 in Houston, Texas. She started singing at an early age, competing in local talent shows and winning many of these events by impressing audiences with her singing and dancing abilities. Destiny's Child, teaming up with her cousin Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland is a cousin. She Kelly Rowland. Be a motivation. Kelly Rowland. And two classmates, Beyonce formed an all-female singing group. Her father, Matthew Noel, served as the band's manager. The group went through some name and lineup changes before landing a record deal in 1997 with Columbia Records. Destiny's Child soon became one of the most popular R&B acts with the release of their first self-titled album. Gaining momentum, the group scored its first number one single. That's what it says, actually. I'm not kidding. Gaining momentum. Gaining momentum. They feel like the people are doing good art, good song, good music, and vibe, good energy. So gaining momentum. The group scored its first number one single on the pop charts with Bills, Bills, Bills. <laughs> Tell me about that. Oh, their second album. The recording also featured another smash hit. Oh, this one, then just sang it. Say my name. Say my name, say my name. When nobody's around you, say my name. Yeah, Favorite is still Girls Around the World, though. While enjoying her group's success, Beyonce began exploring. Beyonce began exploring other projects. She made her acting debut in 2001 with a starring role in MTV's Carmen, a hip hopera. She then starred, co starred with Mike Myers in the <laughs> Austin Powers <laughs> Spy Parody Gold member the following year. Yeah. Yeah, good to see it again. Barely remember some. Some remember some. Solo career. On the musical front, Beyonce took center stage as a solo artist, releasing her first album, Dangerously in Love. In 2003, the recording became a huge success for her, both commercially and critically. It sold millions of copies and won five Grammy Awards. On the album, Beyoncé worked with a number of different artists, including Missy Elliott, Sean Paul, and Jay-Z. She was rumored to be dating Jay-Z around this time, but the couple did not publicly announce, acknowledge their relationship. Acknowledge, not announce. Destiny's Child released their last studio album, Destiny's Destiny Fulfilled, in 2004. And officially broke up the following year on her own beyonce continued to enjoy great success her second studio album 2006 b day featured such hits as irreplaceable and deja vu on the big screen she starred up as a jennifer hudson jamie fox and eddie murphy in dream girls the film was adopted adapted from the hit broadway musical of the same name beyonce and jay-z in 2008 beyonce married rapper and music mogul Jay-Z in a small private ceremony in New York City. Among the guests I cited at the wedding were Beyonce's mother, Tina Knowles, her father, Manager Matthew, her sister, Solange Disney Child member, Kerry Rowland and Michelle Williams, and friend, Gwyneth Paltrow. The newlywed continued to work as hard as ever, promoting her last effort, I Am Sasha Fierce, 2008. Beyonce scored two big hits, off the album, Single Ladies, put a ring on it, and If I Were a Boy. She also returned to the big screen that year, starring as R&B legend Etta James in Cadillac Records. The following January, Beyonce sang James Tran and Master President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama on the inauguration ball. She also launched her own fragrance, Heat, in 2010.
dragon leg is too much.